Janos Moritz, or Juan Moritz, as he is known in Ecuador, was a Hungarian man born in 1923 who eventually emigrated to South America in the 1960s. There, he investigated old Incan gold mines to see if reopening them with modern technology would be profitable. He and his story were the inspiration for Indiana Jones. In June of the year 1969, Moritz traveled to Guayaquil to visit the office of a young Ecuadorian lawyer named Dr. Gerardo Peña Mateos, where he requested to speak with him about a matter of great importance for the country. He informed Mateus that in the depths of the rainforest, the local Shuar people showed him a cave system unknown to civilized society, which the Shuars called Taos. Moritz also claimed that deep in this cavern system was an ancient library consisting of metal plates, and he would like to request legal help to publicize this discovery. Before I continue with the story, I have two quick things to tell you. First, we have a new intro for our videos, so make sure you don't skip it. Secondly, we recently started a Patreon page in case you would like to support the channel. You can find the link for that in the description box below. Thank you for watching. Now please enjoy the story of Janusz Moritz and the Metal Library. After making his claims public, Moritz managed to organize a two-stage expedition that same year with the involvement of the Ecuadorian government and army. The expedition, led by Moritz, started from Guayaquil on July 29th, first by car and then by mule through the rainforest. After a week's long journey, they had successfully completed the first half of the expedition and reached one of the entrances to the cave system which you can see in this picture. After arriving, some members of the expedition went back home, and those who stayed helped build a helipad there. According to their plans, at this point equipment would have been brought in by the army via helicopter, and the second phase of the expedition could have begun, in which they would explore the cave system, and they also would have been visited by Velasco Ibarra, the president of Ecuador. However, for some reason this did not happen and the remaining members of the expedition were forced to return to civilization after waiting for days. The reason for the abandonment of the expedition by the government is unknown, but from that point onward, Moritz was suspicious of the Ecuadorian political leadership, which prevented any further cooperation. In 1972, Janusz Moritz was visited by the Swiss writer Eric von Daniken, who at that point had already become famous for writing the book The Chariot of the Gods. For those who don't know him, he is one of the more well-known supporters of the ancient aliens theory. After this meeting, Danikin wrote the book The Gold of the Gods, in which, among other things, he wrote about Moritz, the Taos Cave, and the Metal Library. However, according to Moritz, the book contained several half-truths, slips, and lies, which is why he later sued Danikin. I do not want to go into the details of the lawsuit here, but nevertheless, Danikin's book undoubtedly helped to make the story of the Metal Library known to a much wider international audience. It is likely from here where the Scottish academic Stanley Hall first heard about Moritz's story. He wrote to him a letter in 1974 with the intention of organizing a new expedition to find the Metal Library. The expedition was planned to be launched in 1976, and he wanted Janusz Moritz to participate in it. Moritz tied this request to the condition that he should be the sole leader of the expedition. Stanley Hall was unable to fulfill this condition, so in the end, the expedition started without Moritz's participation. Several institutions joined Stanley Hall on this new expedition, including the British Museum, the University of Glasgow, the British Army, the Ecuadorian Army, and several state employees. The famous American astronaut Neil Armstrong also participated in it as a sort of celebrity guest. This expedition is one of the largest cave expeditions of all time, with more than 100 participants. 
several geological and botanical discoveries were made in the cave system, and a significant part of it was mapped. Although they did not find the metal library, local newspapers reported that the expedition found an ancient native altar deep within the caves. At the very least, it was proven that the cave system was not unknown to the local indigenous people of the past. Moritz allegedly said later in private conversations that the entrance to the metal library was located a few kilometers from the end point of Expedition 69. He claimed that the shaman of the local tribe had led him there and that it was not possible to reach the library without their permission. Allegedly, these natives had told him that their tribe was entrusted with guarding the library a long, long time ago. Moritz writes about what he saw in the depths of the Tayos Caves in a letter written in 1969 to one of his friends. I quote, This library consists of thousands and thousands of engraved gold plates arranged neatly on one side of the central part of the cave. They are all written in pictographs. There are plates among them that I believe contain formulas, high mathematical formulas, and I believe there is even material among them related to space travel. In addition, there is a lot of archaeological material, most of which is made of precious metals, but there are also a lot of precious stones. There are also two-wheeled carts, the kind used by the Romans, but not identical to them. Most of the material is just suddenly thrown there, carts overturned, lots of animals, birds, butterflies, etc., etc. Everything is under a huge dome, which is so big that even the largest cathedral in the known world could comfortably fit inside it. It is interesting that there are two huge columns in the middle, which look natural, but it is possible that human hands worked on them. Also in the middle of the cave are seven chairs or thrones. I don't know what's in those caves, but I know that it's forbidden to enter them, and if someone does, they will die. In one corner of the cave is a perfect human skeleton made of gold, probably inlaid with gold. All I know about it is that it is one of the ancestors and its height is approximately 180 to 190 centimeters. It is housed in a sort of cabinet made of some kind of translucent material. You must not touch it, because its touch is said to kill a person. Near the entrance is a beautiful statue of a woman. It looks as if she is fleeing, or running away from some great danger with her child in her arms, who in turn is holding the well-known globe, the world globe, in his hands. Involuntarily, I thought about the many cataclysms that humanity has gone through, from which people sought refuge in the depths of caves, a safe place of refuge. End of the quote. During his conversation with Mormon leaders, Moritz also mentioned that he saw bones belonging to giants down there, but he didn't publicly mention it for fear that treasure hunters may try to plunder the place. Speaking of Mormons, Moritz met with the representatives of the Mormon Church in 1977 on at least two occasions. The Church showed great interest in Moritz's discovery because according to the beliefs of the Mormon faith, an angel showed their prophet their holy book on a book made up of golden plates. At one of the meetings, they showed Moritz a book made up of gold plates and asked him if what he had seen in the caves were similar to this. Moritz replied that yes they were but that there were also metal plates, like the ones that could be found in the collection of Father Carlo Crespi. Carlo Crespi was an Italian-born Vatican missionary working in Ecuador, who during his stay in Ecuador paid locals money for ancient native relics. During the 60 years he spent there, he accumulated quite a sizable collection of local artifacts. Among them were a few folding, gilded metal plates with strange symbols on them. Janos Moritz died in his hotel room in Guayaquil in 1991 without ever proving to the world the existence of the metal library. Despite this, there is still a lot of interest in the topic, both in Ecuador and worldwide. In recent decades, there have been several expeditions to the cave systems, and two films have been made on the subject in the last couple of years. The first one was called Tayos, which came out in 2017 and the other came out in 2021 under the title The Legend of Taos. As far as I know, both films were quite successful in Ecuador. Yet still, the question remains, were the claims of Janusz Moritz true? Well, if he had nothing to show for it, I don't think he would have sat idly by for days in the rainforest during his first expedition, 
his supplies almost completely depleted while he waited for the helicopter and the Ecuadorian president to arrive. Also, the fact that similar metal plates to what he had described have already been found in South America only seems to support the claims he had made. I suppose we'll never know for sure, but I do have to ask myself, why is it that Moritz was abandoned by the Ecuadorian government on his first expedition? And why did Stanley Hall and the number of institutions supporting his 1976 expedition not allow Moritz to lead this new expedition himself? I mean, if he was being honest about having found the metal library in the past, isn't that exactly the person you would want to lead you there?